Okay, fire away. Have you ever seen a scoring performance like that in person? I don't believe that I have. Nope. Check back with some of the British Basketball League records, but I don't think so. I think that's about as high as I've seen. You seen you have a lot of good first quarters this year. Was there any point in this one where you thought things were going to go a little differently than even normal big game for them? The time that it kind of hit me, I thought was the start of the third. That he, I think he had a a bucket and an and one like in the first minute, and I was like, wait a minute, he's already got like 30, whatever, a seven, eight, uh, something like that. And I was like, geez, that's a lot with a whole half to go. Right? It even seemed like you know he already had 32 at the half, 32, 34th half, so he's already at 39, and we just started a minute in. So then I was like, this is going to be a big. Probably be a big number tonight. Yeah. The one, the one game here in Toronto you had that anybody on Joel's level is Kawhi. Obviously, how how much easier is having a player like Joel make it for, make it for you to coach and just kind of strategic strategizing and all that stuff? Um, well, he. I mean, obviously, he can score in so many ways, and just like his sheer size um, gets him a lot of stuff around the basket and gets him a lot of free throws. You know, um, and then the shooting touch and all that stuff is is the skill part that that makes it you know um, again extra hard to stop him. But I think again he's like we know we know he's the way he moves and the way skill he is, the size he is, all that kind of stuff, and and he gets motivated like that. It's it's uh, you know anything can happen, I guess. What does it say about his? You talking about motivated? I mean, no. you know, if you guys go up against Minnesota, he has a huge game. He goes up against Denver, a huge game, and he kind of like baptized the young guy tonight. Um, just about his competitive nature against going up against other elite bigs. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, he is competitive, right? I think you guys know him well enough that you've heard some of the stories about his non-basketball competitiveness too, right? He is a competitive guy, and I think that... Um, you know, I guess, I guess, yeah. Like he certainly gets some motivation against certain certain guys or big nights or whatever. But I also think that, you know, I keep going back maybe two or three weeks ago, three weeks ago, let's say, when he said, you know, they said, you know, what do you what do you put this down to, Joel? And Joel just said, listen, I'm, my mindset is to go out there and dominate every night, and that's what I like to hear. That he's in a mindset that he's he's coming out there night after night to do do what he's what he's you know what he's capable of doing and doing it in a in a um you know impressive fashion how aware were you that that he was getting close to wilt's sixers record of 68 i wasn't aware of it i wasn't i didn't i didn't know if that was his record or what his personal high was or any of that kind of stuff i just was continuing to coach the game like the game was still you know, they were they to give them credit. They were playing well, right? They were playing well, and it was, you know, ten, eight, eleven points with, with still a good chunk of time to go. So I was just trying to coach the game. As far well as Victor played, it seemed like, uh, or as far well as Joel played, I should say, it seemed like Victor had him thinking about those jumpers. Usually takes without thinking in the range. It seemed like he was making him think about it a little bit. What did you think of the performance Victor had in general? Yeah, first of all, I thought Victor was great. He, I think he really got him started, right? I thought he, he and I think that, that they've played a lot better recently, and it's usually when he comes out in the start of the game and, and kind of gets them, like I think he gives them a bunch of confidence all around the, the team. He certainly did that tonight just right off the bat, just kind of bang and then bang to three. And, and um, um, and I you know, again, I think he was, you know, he was, he's long, like for me, I got this view when I'm sitting there on the bench, and usually I can see Joel like being over everybody, you know, and the, the, all, there's clearance. And I was like, said that early in the game. I said, hey, tonight's the first night there isn't, there, you know, Joel's actually got to go over s somebody, you know, instead of, I could see the contests from where I was sitting. And I was like, that's different. I was, um, I mean, Joel does hold it in there and studies a little bit. He gets into his little, I, I, it's a little bit of dissecting the guys if they're reaching and stuff. So he does do that a little bit. Um, but a little bit longer tonight, I think. You're right. Yeah. In that, in that fourth quarter, before you come back into the game, as you're monitoring kind of where the game stands and what the deficit is, are you in your head hoping that you can give the full quarter off so he can rest a little bit, or are you wondering if he can get back in and kind of run, run it up a little bit? 
I am always hoping we can give him the fourth, you know, that if we're in a situation where the game's done at the end of the third and we can give him the fourth quarter off for sure because that was not the case tonight. Like every time we kind of, you know, we did get up to, I think, 19. Um, and I thought, okay, and then they just, like, it was right back down to, like, 12, 11. So I, I knew there was no rest and he was coming back tonight, uh, tonight for sure, yeah. It's become rather routine for him to get 30, sometimes 40, but this was 70, this was a franchise record, the crowd was getting into it at the end. Has it hit home with you in the immediate aftermath, the significance of tonight from a franchise perspective for him? Well, I would, I would say this, like this is uh, the history here and some of the unbelievable players that have been here over the whole history of the franchise, that it's, a, it's a, probably a, a, a more meaningful, tougher record to, to have or more prestige or whatever you want to say, just because of some of the guys that have been here, the great scorers that have played here for sure. Um, um, but I think, again, like there's times when, when I kind of think in my head, like, you know, in, until there's an all-out assault or a double team on him, like they're sending multiple, multiple people, um, he's going to probably probably score. So he was he was playing a little faster, I thought, in the second half because he was trying to get away from him before the doubles got there. Um but but yeah, I mean, geez, it's a it's a the history of this franchise, and to have that happen tonight is is that's really special. And people that were here got to see something really cool tonight, that's for sure. Nick, I'm sure you came here expecting and wanting to win, but I guess having seen Joao go from the MVP level he's at last year to an even higher level now, do you feel any like additional pressure, even good pressure, that like this is a moment that needs to be seized, like a special type no. of season. I mean, listen, I think f f for me, like um, I, I go, I go into every single season thinking that like this season needs to be seized, right? Like we got to figure out a way somehow to get get through this thing and get up to the top, right? Every single season of my how many coaching um, years I've had. Um, uh, I just want to make sure we're playing good basketball. Making the right plays, continuing to get better. We've got it. We've got to continue. To, I think we are getting a little better. I think we're starting to read things a little bit better, but there's still a long way to go. I want to. I want to clean up. You know, things as as we keep seeing things, and we're going to see a lot more things now, which is great. And I and I just want us to continue to to get better, make the right reads. What I'm super happy with is I think we had 28 assists and four turnovers. Like like that's going to be hard. To, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna not if you're gonna get a shot up. You know, almost every single possession in the game, and not give away, you know, the silly plays, silly passes, dribble, dribble it off your foot, whatever you have you. Um, you're gonna have a really good chance to win games, and I, that's that's the kind of stuff I'm gonna keep focusing on. The scoring is gonna stand yeah, out, but Joel also made like probably three or four like special passes. Um, yeah, because of cool do passes. You, do you sense like a, a like maybe even more confidence in his game? Uh, you know, attempting to make more of those kind of passes. Yeah, I think his passing continues to get a little bit better. I think our guys' reading of where he is and where to go when stuff's happening is getting better. That's, that's again, an, a concern. I was super impressed with his rebounding, too. I thought he really went to get the ball on the, on the, on the glass tonight. I think, uh, what, how many offensive rebounds did he have? Nine? Does that say nine? Yeah, nine offensive rebounds. That's, I like seeing that. I like seeing like because if he gets an offensive rebound, the chances are he's putting it back in or he's going to the free throw line, and and he's again it's just another way to use his unique skill set to to you know get a possession, get an extra possession, get to the free throw line, have super efficient possessions. Thanks, Joe. Good, everybody. Thanks, Joe. All right. Joel, you've always had an appreciation what basketball means in this town. You also know what a revered figure Will Chamberlain still is in this town. Can you put in any kind of perspective in that backdrop of what you just did tonight? Um, I mean, it was great. Obviously, we'll, you know, accomplish uh, a lot of things, you know, as far as, you know, everything. I mean, the history of this league and basketball in general so uh to be in the you know same conversation i mean that's you know that's pretty it's pretty cool um you know and then they gave me a start that I was actually surprised that he, he never that he's never done so um but no it was just a great night and uh how'd it go 
Uh, you know, I mentioned a few times a lot of, uh, you know, teammates are extremely unselfish, and, you know, they just kept giving me the ball, and uh, I just finished it. John, was there a moment where you looked up and you were like, okay, I can actually get 70? Like, did you ever think about it during the game? Um, I mean, it, it was hard to say because I, I obviously I came out hot. I had 24 in the, f- in the first, and then in the second, I was kind of messing around, and um, and then I had over 30 by half, and then um, had a pretty good start to the to the third quarter, and um, I mean it was also depending on the game. Uh, at that point, I had 59, and the game was still pretty close. Um, so you know, you know, um, felt like I needed to go back, and then once I got back, I was like. Yeah, there's my chance. So, you know, might as well go and do it. What were those six minutes like in the fourth quarter? In the fourth quarter? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was uh, the only thing I told my teammates was, uh, please, just don't force it. Um, you know, just, you know, let's just play basketball. Uh, if I'm open, pass it. If I'm not, um, you know, make sure you make the right play. Uh, it's unfortunate Daniel has got booed for it. Uh, you know, but, you know, we were just trying to play uh, the right way and, you know, make the right plays. And um, But I, I think, you know, obviously I made shots and uh, they found me a lot. Um, so, yeah. To follow up on that on those six minutes, the crowd was very much into it at that time too. They could sense that you were getting close. What was that like for you taking that in, accomplishing that record with that energy in the building? Uh, I was really just trying to close the game. Like I said, at that time, the game was still pretty close. You know, we were only up like 11 or 12 or something like that around that at that time. Um, so, you know, the, you know, it was just about making sure you make shots and, uh, you know, and, you know, because I felt like, you know, once if I, if I did focus too much on it, um, I don't know, I could have missed, you know, shots or I could have been, you know, turning it over and trying to force it. Uh, so I was just focused on, you know, just closing the game out. On the other side, how was the first matchup with Bambanyama? Oh, uh, he's great, man. He's, I mean, he's got everything. Um, you know, size, skill, um, man, got everything. Uh, yeah, there's nothing else to say. Uh, bright future. He's already pretty good, but, you know, once it develop, develops and, you know, his body also, you know, catches on, uh, he's going to be a lot of problems for a lot of guys in this league. Um, but, no, I mean he's he's extremely talented. Just talking about how performance inspiring a few minutes ago. Just to, to know that he and other guys that are coming up are inspired by you and what you're doing. I guess what does what does that mean to you? Uh, what you mean? Uh, uh, when, when we called your in his post game, yeah. he said that your performance was inspiring for him to to witness that and to be part of that. I guess to know that you're having that impact on the guys coming up. What is what is that? Mean? It's great uh, because. Um, Man, I, I even though I started playing late, you know, from the time I started playing, Kobe was my guy. Uh, he's the reason why I started playing uh, basketball. And it's funny because on the same night he had 81, and you know, um, you know, that was my favorite player. So, you no, know, when I started, that was the guys that I was looking, you know, I was looking up to, and you know, they they were doing all this. So, you know, if he says it's inspiring, I hope, you know, in a couple of years, uh, hopefully when I'm, I don't have to guard him and I'm out of the league, he, he's able to do the same thing and you know go out and break all these records and possibly break uh, Wilt's record of a hundred points. Did he inspire you? You know, you have a you have a knack for coming up with big games and big moments, and the eyes of the league were sort of on you and him tonight. No, I I, I would have said that because. Uh, just like I mentioned the other night against Denver, uh, it's not like I just woke up one day and I was like, okay, I gotta try to go out and dominate and have the best game of my career. Um, you know, I try to do it every single night on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, that's where the mindset, just trying to go out and dominate. Uh, so, yeah, there's, you know, 
I'm, I'm really just, you know, pushing myself and challenging myself every single night. Um, you know, what else can I do? What else can I add to my game? Uh, you know, can I try something new uh, to see if it works or if it doesn't? So, yeah, I'm just really challenging myself. Joe, you said your big like prep round uh, after the game. Was it a little more special for you to do it in front of him? Because, I mean, you know, your relationship. I'm glad I did it in front of him. Um, <laughs> no, nah, but, you know, obviously I started with the, you know, first coach. Um, it stopped me a lot. Um, not just on the basketball side, you know, off the court too, you know, just, you know, you know, maturing um, is a big part of it. Uh, so, I mean, it's always good the same, um, especially on the sideline. Um, he, he's done, he's done a lot uh, for, not just for me, but for the whole city of Philadelphia too. Um, you know, when you think about everything not happening, the losing seasons and, you know, to still come out on top and, you know, have the success that he had, um, you know, that that's pretty cool. Um, but, you know, it's always good, you know, to see him. And, um, but I'm kind of glad I did it in front of him so he can kind of see the product of, you know, what he created. So what does it feel like? We watch a ton of tapes. I know you've seen him be on tape, but how long does it take you to get used to the actual length and the actual size when you start playing against him? Um... I mean, uh, when I do watch the games, uh, I, I usually imagine myself, you know, just playing against them, uh, especially because I haven't played. Uh, if I haven't played against some guys, um, and uh, you know, I thought obviously the length is extremely tall, but um, I, I wouldn't say it's easy. But you know, I think I I, I have a pretty good sense of how to attack. You know, some guys. Um, depending on you know how they guard and if they're tall or if they're strong and and all that, then um, you know, I thought you know I just you know, I just made a few shots tonight and uh, but he's extremely long. I I walked past him and I was like I thought I was tall and you know <laughs> the dude was just towering over me. So I mean, but well, like you know we talked about it the other the other day. Uh, I don't know what he is. Um, I just know that, you know, he's an amazing basketball player and he has a bright future and he can, you know, he's a, he's a future. He, he can do everything on the basketball floor. He was talking about how you, when he was watching him contest you and it was one of the first times he's seen somebody your size or bigger guarding you. And, like, watching you, it seemed like you were maybe probing a little longer than normal on those mid-range jumpers. Like, did it take a minute to sort of adjust to no. having that kind of length on you? No, I thought, you know, from the beginning, I had a few as a pool jumpers. Um, the, the, the rest was really on me. I don't know what I was doing, honestly. Half of the time, uh, instead of just shooting the ball, I was just, you know, taking my time and, you know, wasting time when I could have just caught the ball and shot it. Um, so I think that was more about me than, you know, than his life. Uh But, you know, I have a pretty good sense on, uh, to use the hezzy pull to make sure that, you know, whenever I shoot it, I either catch whoever is guarding me flat-footed so they don't have a chance to recover or I just can't go, you know, by them. What did it feel like for you tonight? Like when you're on the court, did it feel like a different night when you're on the heat here like this? No. Nah, um, nah, to be honest, um, no, it didn't because I, I felt like, you know, when you take 40 shots, uh, obviously you're going to you supposed to have a big night, and I felt like I was actually mad at myself because I missed a lot of you know easy shots that I've been making all season, a lot of easy pull, um, a lot of you know pocket pass jumper that I missed. Uh, I had a bunch of layups that I tipped in, so that kind of you know added to the amount of shots that I took. Uh, so yeah, so I was kind of. Just, I was actually mad about you know the easy ones that I was you know missing at the time, but um, yeah. But when you're shooting you know that many shots, which I never thought I would be taking as many shots in my life, um, you know you obviously got you're gonna make some and you're gonna have a big night. Well, tonight marks six wins in a row for you guys, and you have six players out hurt or sick. Um, when you look at what this team has done over the last couple of weeks, how how special do you think it can be once you're at um, I mean, it, it, I mean, we got obviously the keys to stay healthy, um, but you know, doesn't stop. You know, next man up mentality. 
um, where the Ahmad and where the other guys are out. Um, so we just, I mean, we miss him a lot. Uh, you can see, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, when, you know, those guys are out, you can kind of, you can see it a lot. So obviously we need everything we can get. Um, you know, we miss him. Um, but, you know, that doesn't stop us from, you know, wanting to go out and, you know, win the game. Um, but especially, you know, that's, that's the, you know, mindset. Uh, doesn't matter who's playing or not, you got to find ways to win. Joe, well, you talked about tonight, not just you, but Cat had 60 plus points too. It's the first time in years that two players, you know, did that on the same night in the NBA. Um, that was actually surprising. It didn't beat, beat me. Uh, I heard he had like 45 at halftime. Uh, so I was hoping that it would beat me, but no, it didn't. Um, but it's great, um, especially because it's a big two. Obviously, he did it in a different way. Um, I had uh, one three, and he had 10 of them. Uh, so, I mean, that's, uh, you know, that's amazing as a big. Uh, to be able to make 10 threes. Um, I dream I can do that, but I probably can't. Uh, but, um, you know, did it in different ways, but it, it's good to see bigs, you know, just dominate. Joel, as you've emerged as a perennial MVP candidate, your mid-range game has really taken off, especially this season in particular. What have you changed about your preparation, if anything at all, to allow you to take another leap in the mid-range? Um, I don't know. I, I think... Uh, you know, I'm just taking whatever the defense is giving me. Um, and, you know, I just try to prepare myself. Well, tonight I didn't prepare myself. I didn't warm up. But, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, some, you know, most of the time, you know, I just, like, you know, like you said, I just watch a lot of film. Um, you try to see what, you know, defenses do. Um, and, you know, what I'm mostly proud is, you know, I feel, I feel, you know, I feel like, you know, double teams, um, you know, I've gotten so much better at, you know, just handling them. And whether it's passing on, you know, or just attacking before the double comes. Um, so, but that goes back to, you know, you know, just I think it's mostly just film because in the summertime, I just, you know, I don't, I don't walk out a lot. I just try to, you know, make sure that my body's rested and and uh, and then, you know, towards the beginning of the season, you know, start doing a you know a few stuff. But um, yeah, I think it's all about with you know Drew, my trainer, just watching a ton of film. You know, not just from big guys, but you know MJ, Kobe, and you know all those guys. Thanks, John.